tomorrow, Saturday, June 15th, I will be interviewed by Mel from Sneakers Corner. I will be discussing the textual origins of the Quran. Here's a brief preview of the interview. Now, this has some severe problems for Islam. The story was borrowed without understanding the theology um, huh. because in the Quran, Allah can't enter into creation. But there's a clear allusion to him entering in to creation here, uh, which yeah. is, of course, explicit in the biblical text. The theology also is a little messed up in the Quran that it was Allah that sent the raven to hide his sin. <laughs> so it sounds to me like the Quran is a bit of a crime scene, and the body is 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 this story here, you know? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then the crucial part here: the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I am raised up alive. If you had to say a one-sentence version of the gospel, this is pretty much it: that God became incarnate. He died on the cross for our sins, yeah. and then he was raised to life. And a strong Christian echo there. There's two major problems that I see. And one, in the, in the version that is in the Quran, uh, you have Jesus giving life to a uh, clay. And of course, only God can give life. So you got this young child Jesus illegally making clay birds, and to hide it, he makes them come alive and fly away. And then the Quran's like, oh, this is one of the great miracles of Jesus. He, br he brought <laughs> birds to life. <laughs> and this is, of course, still a superstition in Islam today that people will just randomly add if God wills after everything, because then it will come true. But if they forget to say that, uh, the God will let them sit for 15 days without an answer and embarrass them and undermine his so-called uh, last messenger. It's a very convenient cuppet. So clearly there, if, even if it was, you know, we presume it was just a Christian legend, it still is connected with Christian theology. So it makes no sense for it to be in the Quran. Yes. The hour of judgment is thrown into the Quran version for no reason. It doesn't go anywhere. The word's yeah. just there. It, yeah. it, there's nothing before it or after it that has any connection to the final judgment. For sure, we know at least that the story in specifically the Alexander context goes back to the first century. Uh, but a lot of people say that there's parallels to ancient philosophical tales about great kings um, traveling to the ends of the earth. Even if we ignore that it's Alexander, even if we ignore it has pagan origins, even if we ignore that it's claiming you can travel to the end of the earth, it clearly claims there's this gate that doesn't exist. The Hadith whatever we might say, whether they are authentic or not, contradicts the, the ability of Arabs to remember stories because there's always 20 or 30 different versions to every story. So those things alone, those foreign words alone would prove the Quran to be false. We can stop the show now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens a lot when you're saying Islam. It, it... The interview will debut at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 6.30 p.m. UTC. Mel and I will be available for a live chat as the interview is debuted. I hope to see you all there, or you can catch it anytime. Just follow this link to head over to Mel's channel and set a reminder so you don't forget to watch it tomorrow.